सर जस्ट लेट मी नो दैट यू नो इन इन व्हाट केसेस और और इट व्हाट सिचुएशन और व्हाट पोजीशन दैट यू डिसाइड दैट इट इज एन अल्सर एंड इट नीड्स एन ट्रीटमेंट राइट नाउ सो इफ देयर इज अ ब्रेक इन द स्किन देयर इज सम वूंड देयर इज सम पस और सम वाटर कमिंग आउट दैट इज एन अल्सर ओके ओके सो दैट पेशेंट आल्सो देयर आई हैव पेशेंट्स हु से इवन आफ्टर एन अल्सर आई डोंट वांट सर्जरी आई एम हैप्पी टू ट्रीट दैट पेशेंट विदाउट सर्जरी ओके ओके so there is a happy treatment without surgery See, ultimately well. when it comes to any medical problem i think patient is a partner in the decision making process true, true, true. i don't decide i sit down and with the patient explain that this is what you have these are the treatment options available i think this is best for you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. patient says no i don't like the best i like the second best mm-hmm. knowingly if the patient chooses the second best option i'm fine with it okay so doesn't that become a lifetime problem for him again him or her it does but there are patients where the varicose veins are not very big okay and they say i am comfortable living with it mm-hmm. there are patients where the veins become big look very odd mm-hmm. they say okay let me get it treated okay but somebody has a small black patch around the ankle mm-hmm. doesn't mean he has varicose veins correct correct we have many doctors who look at the black patch and without even an ultrasound they say oh you have varicose veins you have black patch on one leg we'll do laser for both the legs both the legs it's a reality i i i'm I, using I, this opportunity to voice my frustration and thoughts about what is happening all around i'm actually speechless sir i mean the way we are communicating right now when the, the way you are talking about the truths in in the misuse age of a treatment sometimes so whenever a treatment becomes easy mm-hmm. we should be cautious absolutely as long as varicose veins were being treated by open surgery and we had only we didn't even have vascular surgeons then when i started doing varicose veins i was a, i was doing general surgery okay and nobody wanted to operate varicose veins mm-hmm. today every specialist wants to operate varicose veins why because the treatment has become easy okay and obviously tre- easy treatment and uh, yes it is financially also beneficial of course when i work in a private hospital mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh earning money from profession is part of my livelihood but, but what i but found i should earn money doing the right thing true you you're talking out of your heart right now absolutely I always talk through my heart. <laughs> I mean, I I'm loving this conversation. Not more just because we are talking about a problem, but because you are talking about something really happening, mysteries uh, uh, around us. So I I'll tell you one thing. Mm-hmm. We talk about corruption in all the other uh, politics. Location, we talk yeah. about corruption in bureaucracy, corruption with uh, all the various government Cor- departments, corruption mm-hmm. in judiciary. There is corruption in medicine also. Right. And why will it not be there? Correct, correct. After all, whether it is politicians, or it is judges, or it is lawyers, mm-hmm. or it is bureaucrats, or it is doctors, mm-hmm. we all come from the same society. True. There are same influences which affect us. So each group is a subset of the society. If the society values are going down, values will go down in every profession. Mm. If the society values are be- better maintained, values are maintained in every profession. Absolutely. it is as simple as that so i strongly feel that your upbringing mm-hmm. how your parents actually bring you up the values that you give to children mm-hmm. how teachers especially in the younger age i believe all my values came from home mm-hmm. and from the school where i studied till class 6 mm-hmm. i was in a missionary school nuns used to teach me mm-hmm. and i still remember incidents which affected me mm-hmm. and have impacted me throughout life made sure that i never do the wrong thing wow. how i treat my colleagues how i deal with people mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how i deal with my patients i think that studying in that school has really impacted that i'm just in a awe and i'm, I'm loving listening to you <laughs> i'm loving this 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 are that you know i'm that uh, communicating with you right so coming back into yeah. the subject again so uh, in what are the major cases where you advise that you know i mean you have to get operated there is no other chance so if there is an emergency mm-hmm. let's say patient has an arterial injury okay in a road traffic accident or a stab or a gunshot mm-hmm. there is no option okay okay otherwise the patient will end up losing the leg right so we say you need it mm-hmm. should get it done patient has a large aneurysm mm-hmm. the artery has become very big mm-hmm. it is at a high risk of rupture okay, okay. we say please get it done so patient is let's say 80 or 90 years old mm-hmm. and he says no if it's ruptures then i die peacefully No perfectly problem. fine it's mm-hmm. a philosophical decision right a younger patient i would be a little more pushy mm-hmm. 
that you've got a long way to go. Why not get it done? Right. Similarly, if a patient has critical limb ischemia, toe gangrene, rest pain, I would say please get surgery or some intervention done, whether angioplasty, stenting, whatever is suitable, because otherwise you are going to lose the leg. It is going to progress in majority of the patients who will end up with a major amputation. Okay. So we say please get it done. Okay. Similarly, if patient has a ruptured aneurysm, mm -hmm. he is going to die if we don't operate. No other option. No other option. Right. Patient has a blood clot in the veins. Mm -hmm. That has to be treated. Okay. Whether we treat only with medicine mm -hmm. or whether we do a procedure to dissolve the clot because it is very severe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or if a clot has gone into the lungs, those require treatment. I mean, okay. Okay. those are important life-threatening situations. Mm -hmm. They require treatment. For example, a patient has a heart attack. Mm -hmm. What do you say? There's no other option. <laughs> There's no other option. Absolutely no other option. Yeah. So, patient gets a sudden block in the artery in the leg because a clot comes from somewhere and blocks the blood flow. It is like a heart attack in the leg. Right. You may call it a leg attack. <laughs> so, if I don't operate within the next two hours, three hours, mm -hmm. patient will end up with the major amputation. So, those are situations where treatment is mandatory. So, uh, so uh, whatever the blocks that we get in our blood, they travel uh, across the body? Some clots can travel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, if a clot forms in the veins, what we call deep vein thrombosis, those clots can travel to the lungs, resulting in what we call pulmonary embolism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is a potentially life-threatening situation. Okay, so but once we start treatment, chances of any clots traveling is minimal. So uh, that has to be treated only with the operation or no. can be cured with the It medicine? is treated with medication. Okay. So we give some, once the clot has gone to the lungs mm -hmm. and the patient is severely symptomatic, then we give medicine intravenously to dissolve that clot. So what Sometimes we can even suck out that clot using a catheter. Okay, okay. So what are the symptoms for this kind of... Uh, so if a clot has gone, if a DVT has formed, like there is a blood clot in the legs, mm -hmm. pain and swelling in the leg. Okay. That is the classical symptom. These are the classical symptoms. So what if something has gone into the... If something has gone into the lungs, mm -hmm. then breathing difficulty. Okay. Breathlessness. Mm -hmm. Now everybody knows about oxygen saturation right. after COVID. <laughs> oxygen saturation falls. Uh -huh. Blood pressure tends to fall. Heart rate goes up. Uh -huh. Sweating is there. So these are signs that clot may have gone to the lungs. Okay. And we then do a CT angio or mm -hmm. a CT pulmonary angiogram which shows that the clot is there and we can treat. Suppose patient has low risk of bleeding, mm -hmm. we can give the medicine to dissolve the clot. Okay. If patient has high risk of bleeding mm -hmm. or it is very severe, then I can put a small catheter into the lungs and suck out that clot. Okay. Okay. So that it will be easy for the patient so to... So the treatment is much faster and the patient recovers much faster. Right. Sir, uh, what will be the recovery time after the uh, surgery uh, to the normal patient I am talking so about? So it depends on what type of surgery. For example, if it is open surgery for aneurysm, mm -hmm. let's say patient will be in the hospital for maybe a week. Okay. If it is a leg bypass, mm -hmm. patient may be in the hospital for three or four days. Mm -hmm. If in the leg I do a balloon angioplasty and stenting, mm -hmm. it may be just two or three days. Mm -hmm. We like to actually keep for a day before the procedure mm -hmm. because we take certain measures to protect the patient's vital organs right. from damage which might occur when we do the procedure, use the contrast which can hurt the kidneys. Okay. So we like to admit a day before mm -hmm. and take certain steps to prevent that kidney injury. So okay. one day extra we keep the patient before the procedure. Yeah, precautions to be taken. For patient care. safety. Right, it improves right. the patient outcomes. Right, right. Varicose veins and all, it's a daycare. Patient comes in the morning can walk out of the hospital by afternoon. Okay, okay. So the other things has to be taken care of before yeah. uh, all the things. Yeah.